Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Smoking Steve's today. We're doing a one year review on a Rectech Bullseye 380. I can't believe it's been a year already. I love this thing. Uh, hadn't failed me yet. Uh, it's lit every time I've used it for a year. It's never failed. And everything I've pulled off of that grill has been nothing but awesome. It's really been good. It's treated me well. Like I say, it hadn't failed me yet, and uh, we're just going to keep on going with this baby. Uh, we're going to go out here and uh, take a look at it, and I'm going to show you a few things about it. Uh, now, I did replace the uh, original grate. I went with the cast iron grate on it, and uh, I'll have a link in the description underneath the video where you can pick that up. And I'm also, also going to show you uh, what I clean it with. Uh, and it makes it look pretty good. And I'll have a link uh, uh, showing you where to get that and uh, uh, pick that up if you like. Uh, I've been trying to find something uh, bad to say about this grill, but uh, you know, I've been struggling with it. Uh, the price point's good. Uh, like I say, I've had no problems and everything that's came off of that grill has really been good. Uh, and I'm, later on in the video, I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures that I've taken of some of my cooks over the past year. Uh, I can't show them all to you, you know. Uh, it's going to be a long, drawn-out drawn uh, uh, process if I show them all. But uh, I'm going to show a few of them. And uh, uh, there's the uh, uh, playlist of uh, everything that I've done on the bullseye. Uh, it's called the Bullseye Playlist, so you can go in that playlist and uh, look at all my reviews on the Bullseye and uh, also all my cooks. But anyway, let's get out there and take a look at that Bullseye and uh, go over a few things. Okay, here it is. Looks pretty good for a year old. A little bit of tarnishing on it, but uh, all in all, it looks pretty good. Here's a look at the vents. Those vents, they get pretty nasty. Uh, they really get black, but uh, I've had pretty good luck with this uh, Barkeeper's Friend Soft Cleanser. It really works good, stainless steel cleaner removes rust lime stains and tarnish it's really good stuff and as you can see it's still looking good after a year and this baby sits out in the weather out in the rain and all the elements and the hopper here's a look at the hopper it's still looking good pellets go in here everything's good a little bit of tarnishing underneath here uh, from uh, high temperatures uh, you can put that in riot mode and it'll get up to 749 degrees and uh, that's pretty hot and it'll tarnish the uh, bottom of that and these vents here uh, you want to keep those cleaned out uh, that's where your uh, air and your smoke escapes uh, so some, sometimes you'll have to take a, a knife and run it up in there and uh, clean those vents out So let's go ahead and open her up and uh, take a peek inside. There's a look at the uh, cover. Got some uh, black on there from uh, the cooks and the heat. But uh, you can scrape a lot of that off, clean that up. This thing uh, could probably use a good cleaning about now. But uh, I normally cook with a uh, drip pan in here uh, to catch all the grease and uh, uh, drippings uh, uh, so we don't have a grease fire. Uh, the only time you should have to worry about a grease fire is if you're cooking at high temps, maybe uh, 400, 450, 500, and especially riot mode, 749. 
So uh, let's get that grade out of there and uh, take a look at the uh, underneath side. This uh, cast iron grate, this baby's really heavy, but uh, I love using this thing. And uh, I'll have a link underneath the video in the description. Uh, uh, you can check those cast iron grates out. And underneath here is my uh, drip pan uh, lined in foil. Catch all that uh, grease and uh, drippings. Lining this with uh, foil really makes it nice. Uh, uh, you can just take that off after you get through cooking, toss it out, and you're ready for your next cook uh, by putting uh, another piece of aluminum in there. This here is your uh, diffuser plate. And uh, as you can see, it's taken on a little bit of rust. Uh, I'm not sure how. It hasn't taken any water in or anything like that. Uh, it has set out in the rain, but uh, it's never been wet inside there. So uh, uh, these things do tend to rust, uh, but it should hold up for a long time. And there's a good look at the inside of the uh, grill here. A uh, little bit of ash, uh, not too much. Let's take a look inside that fire pot. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of ash in here, which is okay. Uh, you want to leave a little bit of ash in there to uh, help absorb any grease that might get down on the bottom. And uh, here's the uh, fire pot. Uh, I did uh, shut it down last time and it went through the uh, uh, cool down cycle and uh, that auger fed some fresh pellets in there and it's ready for the next cook. So uh, should ha just have to light her up and uh, should light up with no problem. And I've never had a problem yet. So uh, we're doing good. So when you get that uh, heat deflector in there, you wanna make sure this uh, lip right here is turned up in the upward position. Uh, that's the correct way to put it in. So let's go ahead and put the uh, uh, drip pan in there and the cast iron grate and uh, let's get this thing fired up. Let's go ahead and uh, put in our drip pan lined with aluminum foil and we'll be following that up with our cast iron grate and uh, what we're going to do then is uh, just shut the lid and uh, go through the light up cycle. So let's go ahead and get this thing fired up. Uh, we got it plugged in here. So it's just a matter of turning this guy on, turn the power on. And uh, it's already set at 225, but if I wanted to change it, just hit up or down, 275, 250, 225, 400, 425, easy adjustments. So we're going to set it at 225 and uh, let this guy heat up uh, the temperature. And uh, like I said earlier, it uh, should be up to temperature within 15 minutes. So uh, we can hit temperature display here and put it over on actual temperature. Okay, I just lit that uh, bullseye about 15 minutes ago. And it's showing 225. Uh, that was the uh, set temperature. And I found that it always gets up to temperature in about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, whether it be set on 225 350, 450, riot mode, uh, whatever. Within 15 minutes, it's up to temperature. And if you notice the uh, smoke coming from the bullseye, it's a nice blue smoke. So, so that means it's a clean smoke. So if uh, you're getting a dirty smoke, uh, uh, maybe you're burning some grease in there or something's going on, maybe you got some bad pellets or whatever, but uh, I swear by these Bear Mountain pellets, uh, they're really good, uh, flavor's good, uh, they burn clean, and they don't leave much ash. So let's take a peek inside here, see what's going on. There again, we're getting a 
last plane smoke. Uh, you probably noticed the uh, blower cycling off, off and on. That's normal operation. Uh, that blower cycles off and on to uh, help regulate that temperature along with the uh, auger feeding the pellets. So that's completely normal. So the way we power this down then, uh, after we make the cook, we need for it to go through the uh, cool down cycle. So uh, what we do is just tip this on off button right here. You don't want to unplug it because you want it to go through its cycle. So you power off and went to cool. Okay, so that's normal. And what's going to happen, that blower is going to continue to run, kind of clean that fire pot out, and that auger is going to run a little bit and get you ready for the next cook. So you shouldn't have to uh, preload your uh, fire pot on the next cook. You should be ready to go. Just come out, turn it on, set your temperature, and you're ready to cook. Okay, it was in the cool mode for maybe two, three minutes, and now it's showing the auger running. So it's loading that fire pot up uh, with some fresh uh, pellets for the next cook. Now it's important to uh, let it uh, run its course, uh, and then once the auger's done, the display will go blank. And then if you want to unplug it, you can and move it back to uh, uh, wherever you store it at. Okay, you probably noticed this rubber mat underneath the grill here. Uh, this thing really comes in handy for catching any drippings or uh, grease or something that may uh, uh, flop out of the grill. And I also have one for the uh, Rectec Bull. Okay, that display just went off just like that. So uh, it's completed its uh, cool down cycle. And, uh, you know, take your food inside to eat time you get done eating this thing should be cooled down come out and wipe her down a little bit get the crud off the grate and you're all ready to go for the next cook and uh, I might add that uh, I don't keep this thing covered uh, we're here in Florida and uh, well I got a bull sitting back here and I don't keep it covered either uh, I found that uh, well, I had a big green egg and I found that uh, uh, when I covered that uh, the condensation built up underneath there and uh, that created a problem. It never did dry out. So I figured the air getting to it and letting it dry out was a lot better than covering it and uh, keeping the rain off of it and stuff. So uh, it's in good shape. Uh, I've never had any moisture in the pellets or inside the grill. Uh, I've had no issues at all. Okay guys. Back in the house now, uh, uh, told you a little bit about the grill, uh, the one year experience and all the great cooks coming off that grill. Went out there and showed you the grill, looked underneath the hood, started it up, shut it down for a year. This thing has worked like a charm. Uh, now I know a, a lot of people have maybe experienced, uh, or heard of somebody that had a grease fire. But if you keep that baby clean, uh, don't let the grease build up in there, especially if you're going to be cooking hot and fast, because that grease will catch on fire, and uh, you don't want to do that. So uh, that's why I like to use the drip pan uh, with aluminum foil. Uh, I can just take that aluminum foil, wad it up, toss it out, put some new foil on there, and I'm ready to go for the next cook. And all those drippings aren't getting down below and getting in that fire pot and causing a problem. Now, you can uh, leave a little bit of ash in the bottom of that grill to help absorb that grease if it does get down in there, and that'll help out too. So, uh, uh, as far as complaints go on the grill, uh, you know, it's a great price point, and anything that they would do more and above what they've already done, uh, they'd probably have to raise the price, but... Uh, uh, I do wish the thing was a little bit taller. Uh, it's a little short, but uh, that's no big issue. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, 
Uh, so it's a little bit shorter than the uh, Rectech bowl, the cooking surface. And uh, as far as that uh, uh, plate underneath there, that uh, diffuser plate, uh, it does have a little bit of rust on there. And, uh, uh, you know, it's going to hold up for quite a while longer. But uh, I believe there's a, a stainless uh, uh, diffuser that you can also buy and uh, uh, use in that bullseye. So uh, all in all, guys, I'm liking it. I got this Rectech bull sitting here. Uh, you know, it, it cost me a lot more money for that Rectech bull than the bullseye. And uh, my go-to is the bullseye. Uh, now you're not gonna be able to cook a, a, a beer can chicken in there because the, uh, the profile lid is just not tall enough to uh, stand the chicken up. But uh, spatchcock chicken is the way to go anyway. Uh, spatchcock chicken is a lot better. Uh, they cook a lot faster, uh, a lot more moist. Guys, the proof is in the pudding. Go to that bullseye playlist. Look at some of those cooks that come off that smoker. They've really been good. Check them out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Hope to see you on the next one.